What's good, YouTube? This your man Spill Dog. You know what, man? Uh, I think I think even though they split ways, I think Derrick James would be fine without Earl, and Earl would be fine without Derrick James. For whatever reason, <clears throat> it turned into what it turned into, uh, and I, it ain't no coming back from stuff like this. Uh, no matter what happens, whether whether DJ get his money or not, however this shit play out, they done. Uh, Earl didn't need a trainer for no father figure, nothing like that. Like some of these fighters uh, who come up and don't have no a dad in their life. Uh, Earl got a solid found family foundation, so uh, it was. It, I think it was always a trainer coach relationship for Earl. I mean, I think they probably got a little more cordial over the years, just because they worked together, but. Uh, I don't think Earl sought out Derrick James for friendship. It was it was it was a business relationship. Uh, and I will say this. Uh, I just I just got a hard time thinking. Okay, Derrick James, he got a job. You know, picked up. You know, brought on five six more fighters, and you're trying to train them all at the same time. And this your first time doing it. Uh. He he, he he didn't do it. He didn't do a damn good job. That's that's facts in his last fight. Uh, Earl was not prepared to fight Terrence Crawford, and that's partly because the trainer didn't spend enough time studying the fighter. You can't you can't pick a guy like uh, Terrence Crawford and wait until the, a couple of months before y'all fight to start trying to. Really look at this guy and see what he do and don't do well. And he and Derrick James is on record saying he don't watch Terrence Crawford fight uh, until there's some sign he, he wasn't even taking it serious. And guess what? It looked like it. I guarantee you, Bo Magnum didn't take that approach. I'm sorry. You know and uh, you know, he, 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 shit. You let your fighter down. I mean, and if if I I was I said this before the fight, if if I'm Earl Spence, you can't train nobody else when I got a fight but me. That's how it would have had to been. You know, uh, and I mean, you know, uh, Derek James, uh, I think, I think, you know, he just, he, he, you know, that, that trainer of the year, uh, that trainer of the year award really, really meant a lot to him. I mean, it got to his head and, 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 he, and he lost focus. I saw it. I, I, I man, I got videos. I ripped Derrick James after the fight. I ripped him after the Frank Martin fight. After the Frank Martin fight, I, I uh, people who watched my video said I was worried about uh, Mel and Earl Spence from that point because I saw Frank look like shit that night. And I and I said okay. Well, and at first thing, and then at the media workout uh, was with, just go watch the media workout. You ain't got to take my damn word for it. Go watch the media workout when Spence got ready to fight Terrence Crawford. Then go seven or eight years earlier and watch the media workout when Adrian Broner and Sean Porter was getting ready to fight. Uh, Earl and Derrick James was working out in Mayweather Gym. Look how sharp it was then. Then you fast forward and look how bad that shit looked. It looked it was it was it was embarrassing. It really was. It was embarrassing. Uh, watching them on the mist seeing just how bad their chemistry had got lost because you hold in the midst with all these different fighters in all these different divisions. You got a heavyweight. You got a 154 pounder. You got Earl. You got now you got Ryan Garcia, a little dude. You got Frank. Come on, man. And then you try to train everybody yourself uh, in two-hour slots. When you're training for a big fight, Y'all, yeah, y'all might say that y'all gonna be in the gym for two hours and look up, and it's four hours later. Y'all still working on something. You gotta, st you don't know how long it's gonna take to work out shit. Uh, after the fight, well, oh gosh, I was on record saying they need to tighten up that defense. He getting hit too much, but you can't tighten up your defense when you work with all these other fighters, and you are gonna just act like shit is okay. Figure Earl, uh, you know he'll do what he been doing, just get through it. This it's, it's probably been a, a little while now he needed a new trainer because uh, they've added nothing. 
and quiet as kept. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I feel like if Kenny Porter reached out to uh, Earl Spence, I know a lot of people may not like Kenny Porter's training methods, but I, I, I found them effective. Sean Porter was a damn good fighter to be as small as he is. He made it a long way working with his dad. So I think Kenny Porter's a solid trainer. You know, uh, everybody, uh, just because he wasn't a, a fighter like Floyd Daddy and some of them don't mean he don't know what he's doing. You know, uh, I mean, Sean, his son made it a long damn way for him not to know. <laughs> I put it to you like that. Sean Porter can fight, and his daddy taught him that. Sean Porter, a damn good boxer, got, got a, well, had one of the more underrated jabs. Uh, out of the out of the guys in his division, Sean Porter had a good jab. It was a lot. Of, it was a lot of good things Sean Porter did in the ring. Uh, Kenny and Earl got a good relationship. I, I mean, that's somebody I think he could be comfortable with. You know, uh, because at this point, it ain't a whole lot. You got. I mean, the boy already know how to fight. <laughs> the boy already know how to fight. There's plenty of good trainers out there. I hate to say it better than Derrick James. That's not saying Derrick James is not a great trainer. I always said he was. I still think he is. But I think, I think, uh, I think the uh, accolades and the popularity got to him. I think he might think he's better than what he actually is to think you can train all these damn fighters by yourself and you think you're doing a good job. I saw all of them look like shit last year. That was not a coincidence. That's the part people got to understand. Just don't, 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 you know, stop taking the shit personal. You know, uh, Derrick James fell off last year because he was training too many fighters and patting himself on the back. Well, and that wasn't him. When he, when he said that statement, to Bo Mac up on the stage, I was real, I was kind of ashamed of, because that wasn't him. I was always impressed by him, and, and well, I was always yeah, impressed and and happy that the way he carried himself, like he didn't, he wasn't no ignorant brother up there uh, getting off into them petty squabbles and confrontations. He was staying away from that shit. After he got the straight of the year, now you all of a sudden, now you being confrontational and stuff like that. And I thought Derrick James, Represented the the, uh, the boxers and the trainers well for for up until last year. I felt like the way he was carrying himself was where a trainer should carry himself. Fall back and let the fighter. That's the one who deserved the credit. He the one in the in the ring fighting. Cause uh, every now and then the fighter gotta gotta rely on what he know himself in that ring. And the trainers ain't always giving the right information. They would like to think they are. Sometimes the fighters in there not doing what they say because the shit ain't working. You know that. I mean, that's just how it is sometimes. You know. Uh, so like I gotta say, man. You know, I, I'm not picking no sides, but I didn't like the fact of uh, you, this man finna be in the biggest fight of his career. You training four, five motherfuckers at the same time. I wouldn't have went for it. I, I I got video saying if I was Earl, when I'm fighting, you ain't training nobody else. And if that's a problem, then we got to split ways. I would have been, I mean, uh, Earl the one paying for the shit. He the one had to go out there in front of the world and get the shit beat out of him because he was underprepared going in the ring. I have been saying that shit since, since before it happened. Since that media workout, I've been feeling like this. So, I mean, uh, I got no sympathy. I really don't, you know, uh, I just figure, hey, you know, this one last fight, you got to train now, DJ. You you can go ahead with, and, and show the world just how good you is and, and, and build you another guy. Uh, and that's all you got to do, you know, you know, just go get you somebody else. But uh, that's a wrap with him and Spence. That's a wrap. And to be honest with you, if, if the, way, the way I eat training fighters, if that's how he was going to be, if I was Spence, it would be a wrap anyway because I couldn't have my trainer. Fuck with all these different fighters. And, and, and you don't already told the world you don't really watch no film on these fights and stuff like that. Well, guess what? It showed last year. It shit showed last year. I bet you Crawford and Bomack look at film. Real talk. But uh, that's it for me on this video. Like the video, to like or subscribe. Till the next time, it's your man Spill Dog. I'm out.